Major updates in spaceflight, debris from B-14 has been recovered, shedding light on the cause of its explosion, potentially affecting future flight timelines. Newly released footage also highlights B-14's active flip maneuver in stunning detail. In a surprising move, Jared Isaacman's NASA Administrator nomination has been officially withdrawn. Let's dive into all of it on today's episode of Great SpaceX. Flight 9 will go down as one of the most dramatic missions in Starship's journey so far, marked by both a tense flight and an explosive conclusion. While many aspects of the mission exceeded expectations, both stages encountered issues that captured the attention of the spaceflight community. The most unexpected development came from B-14, which experienced a serious problem just seconds before splashdown. Moments after initiating the landing burn, SpaceX lost all communication with the booster. No immediate data was available, leaving many questions in the air. But now, new updates have shed light on the mysterious end of B-14. Recently, several images surfaced showing debris, especially composite overwrapped pressure vessels, or COPVs, drifting onto the coast of Mexico. In one photo alone, up to nine COPV tanks can be seen and more appear in other images. These tanks, crucial for storing high-pressure gases used to feed the engines, are clearly labeled Made in the USA and feature the Luxfer brand, a longtime SpaceX supplier. Alongside the tanks, images show a variety of debris in all shapes, sizes, and colors, likely fragments from multiple parts of the Super Heavy booster. The location of the wreckage lines up with the official warnings and flight data pre-launched hazard notices, had already outlined a wide debris zone, beginning just off the Boca Chica, Texas coastline and stretching southeast toward the region between Florida and Cuba. According to the FAA, all debris from Flight 9 landed within this designated hazard area. Given that Super Heavy operates for only six to seven minutes before returning, its splashdown point would have been relatively close to both Texas and Mexico. It's entirely plausible that the ocean currents eventually carried the lighter parts, like the COP ashore. From the condition of the recovered parts, it's clear that the B-14 explosion was substantial but not total. The COPVs remained largely intact, suggesting the blast wasn't powerful enough to melt or destroy them, but strong enough to shed much of the booster's body, including engine plumbing, fuel lines, and structural elements. As for the cause, SpaceX has shared some insights. It appears that B-14 had to re-enter at a higher angle of attack, which likely increased stress on its aft section due to atmospheric pressure. Combined with what looked like a landing burn engine failure, it's suspected that leaking fuel may have ignited during descent, causing the explosion. That hypothesis is supported by visible anomalies in the burn sequence just before loss of signal. However, until SpaceX releases an official post-flight report, the exact sequence remains speculative. Regardless, this discovery leads us to the next big question, how will this affect the schedule going forward? While the explosion and debris raise environmental and operational concerns, the FAA has already clarified that the issues with B-14 are exempt from further investigation. Approved exemptions include grid fin failure, engine issues during landing burns, and hard splashdowns due to insufficient thrust. Since B-14's malfunction falls within these boundaries, no additional regulatory probe is required which is a big relief for SpaceX's rapid launch cadence. Still, SpaceX must now retrieve and properly manage the debris. Environmental safety remains a priority, especially with materials washing up along the international coastlines. Engineers and recovery crews will need to conduct a thorough survey, collect the debris, and assess any environmental impact in collaboration with Mexican authorities. Cleanup and remediation will be critical to maintaining good relations and continuing flight operations without legal or diplomatic complications. Despite these challenges, there's optimism in the air. With the FAA investigation limited only to the Starship upper stage and no major delays anticipated, a Flight 10 launch window in June still looks promising. Hardware progress supports this as well. Both Ship 36 and Booster 16 have already completed cryogenic testing, and engine installation is underway. Once static fire testing and final preparations are completed, launch readiness will follow swiftly. So what do you think? Can Flight 10 lift off in June? Drop a yes or no in the comment section down below along with your launch date prediction. My bet? I'm going with June 22nd. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to Great SpaceX to stay on top of all the latest updates as we follow this incredible journey toward the future of space exploration.
Despite its explosive conclusion, B-14 made significant strides during its test flight, proving once again that even missions that don't end perfectly can yield valuable progress for SpaceX. Unlike previous Super Heavy boosters, B-14 was never intended to be recovered. It was designed to splash down in the ocean, freeing engineers to push boundaries with new maneuvers. Among the key goals were three critical tests, a higher angle of attack during re-entry, a two-engine landing burn, and most notably, an active flip maneuver during hot staging. While the two-engine landing burn was ultimately cut short due to the booster's failure, the active flip was executed successfully and marked a major milestone in booster control. SpaceX later released a remarkable footage of this maneuver, including a never-before-seen camera angle from inside the booster's engine compartment. This is an especially harsh environment subject to extreme heat, vibration, and pressure, making the ability to capture and share visuals from this area a major engineering and communication achievement. Additional cameras were also mounted on the forward section of both the booster and the Starship, further enhancing public and engineering insight into flight dynamics. So what exactly happened during the active flip? The footage reveals the three C-level Raptor engines igniting forcefully during hot staging. After stage separation, these engines gimbaled in different directions, visible through the shifting flame orientation and their return journey to a central alignment. This maneuver created a deliberate thrust vector asymmetry, generating rotational force that helped initiate the flip. It's important to note that the vacuum-optimized Raptors on the ship had not yet built up significant thrust during this initial moment, so the burden of initiating the flip fell entirely on the booster's C-level engines. But engine thrust alone wasn't the only factor. As shown in the forward-mounted camera angle, SpaceX had also modified the hot staging ring. One side of the ring was completely sealed off, eliminating vent holes in that section. When the engines fired, the sealed side trapped more force, creating unequal pressure that pushed the booster to begin flipping in a specific controlled direction. This detail is crucial. In previous missions, the booster would flip in a random orientation, requiring SpaceX to expend additional fuel to reorient the vehicle for a proper descent trajectory. The new method means less fuel spent correcting orientation, which translates into more efficient missions and the potential to carry heavier payloads into orbit. SpaceX confirmed this breakthrough on X, stating, After stage separation, Super Heavy flipped in a controlled direction for the first time. This maneuver requires less propellant to be held in reserve and enables additional payload mass to orbit. However, a question arises, how will this system evolve? In a recent presentation, at Starbase, SpaceX unveiled a new hot staging design reminiscent of the system used in the Soviet N-1 rocket. This updated staging ring features a much larger central vent, which could make it harder to create the asymmetrical pressure necessary for a controlled flip. So how will SpaceX adapt? There are two likely options. First, they might retain the current strategy of blocking off one side of the ring to control the flip. This method has already proven effective and offers a predictable result. The second option would be to adjust engine engine thrust asymmetrically to generate rotational force. However, this could potentially affect Starship's own trajectory, making it more complex and risky. For now, the first approach appears to be the more feasible path forward. Regardless of the method, what's clear is that SpaceX continues to iterate quickly, using each flight, to fine-tune the world's most powerful launch system. Even without a soft landing, B-14 provided a huge amount of data, especially from systems that had never been tested in real flight conditions until now. So if you're excited to see what SpaceX comes up with next, type keep going in the comment section down below and show your support for their bold progress. We're one step closer to the future of spaceflight, and it's all thanks to tests just like this. And now, let's turn our attention to one of the most surprising developments in UA space leadership, the withdrawal of Jared Isaacman's nomination for NASA Administrator. For months, many assumed that Isaacman, the billionaire entrepreneur and commander of the Inspiration4 and Polaris Dawn missions, would take the helm at NASA under President Donald Trump's leadership. And now the situation has taken a dramatic turn. On the 31st of May, the news site Semaphore reported that 
President Trump had formally withdrawn Isaacman's nomination. Shortly after, the White House confirmed this decision, with Trump making a statement on Truth Social, saying, After a thorough review of prior associations, I am hereby withdrawing the nomination of Jared Isaacman to head NASA. I will soon announce a new nominee who will be mission-aligned and put America first in space. A White House spokesperson also emphasized the importance of alignment with the president's priorities. It's essential that the next leader of NASA is in complete alignment with President Trump's America First agenda, and a replacement will be announced directly by President Trump soon. One key theme mentioned by the White House was a renewed focus on Mars. The administrator of NASA will help lead humanity into space and execute President Trump's bold vision of planting the American flag on the planet Mars. This suggests a more Mars-focused agenda, while Isaacman has previously spoken in favor of maintaining a balanced approach between lunar exploration and future Martian missions. His centrist stance may not have fully aligned with Trump's more aggressive goals for Mars. There's also speculation that Isaacman was not supportive of the White House's proposed budget cuts to NASA. He previously described the cuts as not an optimal outcome and publicly stated that he would advocate for strong investment in space science. These comments may have clashed with the administration's priorities and contributed to the withdrawal of his nomination. Additionally, some political analysts have pointed to Isaacman's past political donations, including reported contributions to the Democratic Party's 2022 campaign efforts as another possible factor. While this aspect remains speculative, it could have influenced the final decision. Despite the disappointment, Isaacman responded with grace. On X, he expressed optimism and support for the administration's future direction, even though he would not be leading NASA. Musk also weighed in with high praise, posting, It is rare to find someone so competent and good-hearted. Indeed, many within the space community viewed Isaacman as a strong candidate, technically knowledgeable, deeply invested in the future of spaceflight, and someone with actual flight experience aboard SpaceX missions. His removal now adds to the uncertainty at NASA, which has been operating without a permanent administrator for nearly six months. So what do you think of this unexpected decision by the White House? Setting aside political preferences, do you believe Jared Isaacman will deserve a place at NASA's top leadership table? Let's go ahead and continue this discussion in the comment section down below. Your thoughts matter. In any case, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.